Hey everyone, I'm Jacob. I'm a machine learning engineer and developer evangelist here at Voxel 51. And today I'm gonna to be telling you about our concept interpolation plugin. So we are currently in the middle of a 10 weeks of plugin series. For those of you who don't know, 51 plugins are an extension. They, they allow you to customize and cater the 51 experience uh, to your specific workflows. So they are uh, incredibly flexible and incredibly powerful. And over these 10 weeks, we are putting out a plugin a week or more to show you some of the things that you can do uh, with these plugins. Now, this concept interpolation plugin was actually a week zero plugin contribution. So this happened before the 10 weeks of plugin started, but it's so cool that I just wanna show it anyway. Uh, so what do I mean by concept interpolation? Uh, well, I mean, take two concepts and kind of find somewhere in between them and then find the images that are similar to that. I'll explain a little bit more what I mean in a second, but this is the plugin right here. So this is a joint Python and JavaScript plugin. So there is a uh, JavaScript component to this. There is a uh, custom panel that is built to actually uh, manage the interpolation, making it interactive. Uh, you can view the little GIF over here. Uh, and this is a multimodal plugin. So it requires that you have a similarity index and some embeddings computed on the images in your data set. Uh, and these embeddings must be computed with a model that supports both text and images. And the clip model, the contrastive language image pre-trained model from OpenAI is a great example of this. And uh, you can compute your similarity by doing something like this. Uh, I'll also show you how to do that in the app in a second. Uh, but what the interpolation is, is basically you can define two text concepts, uh, one on the left and one on the right, and you define an interpolation strength. And here that interpolation strength, or what is alpha here in this equation, is actually defined via a slider. So you are uh, kind of interpolating between those two concepts. And this is a linear interpolation that's going on. And the embeddings for those text concepts are taken uh, with this appropriate linear sum, this, this linear uh, contribution from each. Uh, and then it is uh, normalized. And then we do a similarity search with respect to that text, that, that, that vector which has been generated. So effectively we are taking these two text concepts, going somewhere in between them, which we're defining, and then we are doing a search for whatever the images are in our data set that are the closest match to that particular interpolation, that, that concept that we have defined or created. And you can install this plugin with 51 plugins download and then passing the name of this GitHub repo. So that's Jacob Marks, that's me, slash concept interpolation. Okay, so here we are in 51 app, uh, and I'm working with a thousand samples from the validation split of the Coco dataset. So I've got this button over here. And this, is, this button is the open interpolation panel button. And if you look closely at it, you'll see there's actually a bunch of points which are on this kind of you know wavy curve and now this is just to symbolize or represent interpolation um, so if we click on that we can open this interpolation panel now i'm going to get back to this in a second um, we can also access this via the plus button over here and then we can also move it around if we'd like i'd like the uh, having these vertically split for this, just given the, the way the interpolation panel is laid out. So let's, uh, let's do it like this right here. And here we've got this sim. So this sim over here is the similarity index that we are going to be using. Now, if we didn't have a similarity index, then this panel would actually not be openable. So I can switch to another data set for a second. Let me go to the um, form understanding uh, under uh, some, some noise. So this is a particular data set that's like about OCR and understanding the context of documents. Uh, this is used in another one of the plugin videos, which you should check out. Uh, but if I try to click on open interpolation panel, it won't actually work because it's not activated. Uh, and this is using uh, the you know activation. Uh, so, so every panel in uh, the JavaScript plugins in 51 supports these activators. So these are conditions 
on which your plugin is actually activated and, and uh, on which the operator uh, is then able to be used or executed. So let's go back, let's look at the thousand samples again. And you know, if we didn't have a similarity index computed, we could do that by running this compute similarity. So this is a plugin that, this is a, uh, a plugin that comes with uh, 51. And here we can put the name of the brain key. So let's do clip dim. And you know, we're not using patches here, uh, although you could do this with patches as well. Uh, we're not, we don't care about storing these embeddings in a field on our data set, uh, but we do care about the model. So we would be using a clip uh, vision transformer here. Uh, and you know, we could set everything else that we'd like. And this backend specifies what we're using to actually uh, do the similarity searches on these embeddings, these vectors that we have uh, you know, generated the similarity index with respect to. So by default, it uses uh, scikit-learn, but you could also use LanceDB, Milvis, Pinecone, or Quadrant. Uh, we have integrations with all of those. And when you deal with large data sets, uh, you're going to want to use one of those so that you can do this, uh, this search very, very quickly. Uh, so we could delegate this execution if we wanted to, uh, and, and then we would be able to use this, these, uh, the, the concept interpolation panel uh, plugin uh, after the fact. Now, we've already done this, and we want to get a sense for what our, uh, our, our similarity indexes that we've already computed. We can use this get brain info operator right here, and we could look at the similarity indexes that we computed, the similarity brain runs. And here, sim is the only one that we have, and let's execute and see what's going on. So the brain key is sim, the run type is similarity. This is when we created it. And this is the brain config. So it's using sklearn. This is a small data set, so that's fine. Uh, and it is using the clip model uh, with a cosine metric here. So the cosine metric is uh, effectively looking at the angle between vectors. So it it is a uh, normalized metric that looks at angles, not distances in the traditional Euclidean type sense. Okay, let's open back up our interpolation panel and see it in action. So here we've got the weight that we can interpolate between. If we had multiple uh, similarity indexes, we could choose which one we wanted to use here. Uh, we can set a left prompt and a right prompt. So let's choose sunny and rainy. So if we stay in the middle right here, uh, you know, we'll get something in between sunny and rainy. So we hit execute. Now it's going to do a search for things that are kind of sunny, kind of rainy. These are like kind of halfway in between. We can look at things that are all the way sunny. So this is the super sunny. This would be the super rainy. We can go anywhere we want on the spectrum. So we can see how Things are changing as we're going. We're getting slightly different results as we go. And you know, we could also change this number here. So this is how many it's giving us. Let's do that. So it's going to give us more images. And you, know, you get the point. Um, so the more images you have in your data set, the better the results are going to be because this is finding the things that, that are closest to some text prompt. And text embeddings and image embeddings, despite the fact that this was a contrastive language image pre-training model, and you know it, it supports both text and images, uh, it is not perfect. And there are going to be a lot of uh, images and text that just so happen to be kind of in the right orientations, that they're uh, kind of close to each other. They're not gonna be super close, but they're close enough that they might mess it up if you don't have images that are really pretty close to the text concepts that you are uh, setting forth. So if you had a lot of images and you had a lot of images that were you know, pretty representative of sunny and rainy places on that spectrum, then the results you'd be getting would be a lot closer to those concepts. I hope that this was helpful to you. I, I hope that you will find some use for this concept interpolation panel. Um, I, I just think it's super cool. Um, I think that it is a you know, really cool way to see uh, how you can interactively work with multimodal data and see, you know, with going back and forth between text and images. And we've got a lot more content around this type of thing coming up soon. Uh, we've got
things that are much, uh, you know, much more extensively interactive, but in the same vein. And you know, this is kind of where the future is going, this multimodal way, the ability to interact with your visual data uh, via text. So uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks so much.